Um, to start off, could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. So my name is Michael Barton. I'm an author and international speaker on autism and neurodiversity. One of the main messages I like to get across to people is not just about understanding what it's like to be autistic from my own personal experience, but how we need to look on the positive side of things, how we need to appreciate the strengths and abilities that autistic people have, as well as the support needs that we have. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm Andrea, and I'm this Harper. is Harper. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, how would you define autism? Well, the one sentence definition is autism is defined by the deficits a person displays when interacting with other people. So this means that we find social interactions and social communication difficult. It's something that most people take for granted. You're generally able to socialise with other people without much of a problem. But all of the social skills that you take for granted as an autistic person, I've had to be explicitly taught in the same way you would learn maths or the sciences or a foreign language. For example, I needed to have explicit lessons when it comes to social skills. Okay, so um, how would you say that having autism can like impact, like to um, develop this, like how would you say that it, it can impact your communication with others? I'll start by saying that, well, we know the social world is hugely complex, as I said, not just who you interact with, the different situation and keeping up with the latest context as well. So being autistic can affect a significant part of a person's life. But one of the things I like to say is that the definition of autism doesn't cover anything about us when we're not in a social situation, when we're either by ourselves or not expected to interact with others which is why I like to say being autistic is just one part of what makes me who I am as a person. And so in what ways would you say that your learning differed from neurotypical humans during your years of primary, secondary and tertiary education? So certainly as a child, I found it difficult to make friends because I didn't have that intuitive understanding of other people. So. I received support throughout my time at school to help me understand social situations, either through role-playing social situations, which is known as social stories, as well as, as I said, just going out into the playground. But that is something which I would often find difficult because in the playground you're just put out there expected to make friends by yourself, even though this is something that I needed help with. As I've got older, I've become more able to understand social skills and understand how to make friends and how to interact with other people. But even today, as an adult, having been working in full-time employment for the past nine years, social skills and interacting with other people is still something I have to consciously think about. Okay, so um, kind of switching topics a bit, what encouraged your decision to become an author? So what encouraged me to become an author? So the idea behind my first book, It's Raining Cats and Dogs, was that when I was in junior school, when I was seven years old, my language skills had caught up because with young autistic children we often have delayed speech. We start talking later than most people but by the time I was seven years old I was speaking at the level you would expect for a seven years old but because of my very literal way of thinking I didn't understand the expressions and sayings that people would use on a daily basis often without thinking about their literal interpretation. So the idea behind It's Raining Cats and Dogs was we had an exercise book which I wrote an expression I wasn't familiar with, I drew a picture of the first thing that came to my mind and then my support assistant wrote what it really meant underneath, which meant I could learn the different expressions, as in this expression means that, that means that, I could learn 
what the expressions mean, but it also helped other people around me, my teachers, my family and my friends, to understand how my autistic brain works. And it was this support strategy that was the idea behind my first published book, It's Raining Cats and Dogs, because we found it was useful for me and it was useful for other people around me as well. So I felt that this was a resource that everybody should know about. So that's what got me into becoming an author. That's great. Uh, so would you say autism stood in the way of you and your career? Yes, I would say that being autistic has influenced my career. One thing I say that autistic people should do is we should be able to use our strengths and abilities because even though I struggled with social skills, I struggled in students, when it came to other situations such as in maths and science subjects at school, I always did very well in those subjects because the skills required for them were very much in line with the skills that I have, that's just my logical way of thinking and my attention to detail. And these are the skills that I've transferred into my career as a data analyst, because when applying for the job, they want to know why you are the best candidate for the job. So I was saying that I'm autistic, which means I have the skills required for the job. These things come naturally to me. They're very closely aligned. So I'd say being autistic has had an influence on my career. Okay, so that was kind of leading into my next question. In what ways do you think autism has been beneficial in your life? I'd say being autistic has been beneficial, partly because it's given me a different way of thinking compared to most people. Having my own unique thought processes and points of view helps other people to see things differently. But as for my career, I mean, it's been said for a long time that we need people who are scientists or engineers and people who are developers working with coding, for example, people with that logical and analytical way of thinking, which is synonymous with autistic people such as myself. So, as I said, not only has that been beneficial for my career, one of the things I say in my talks is that we need to understand and appreciate autistic people because when we're in an environment that we feel comfortable and when our support needs are met, we can then go on to excel and potentially do great things. And so what are some common misconceptions our society can make about having autism and how do you feel about the current awareness and acceptance of neurodiversity? Generally speaking, I'd say society has a long way to go when it comes to understanding and accepting autism. One of the problems we face is that pretty much everyone has heard of the term autism and therefore has some, even if it's very little, understanding of what autism means. But there's still a long way to go when it comes to understanding what it truly means to be autistic. One of the most common media portrayals of autism is Rain Man, the film back in the 1980s where Dustin Hoffman played the character Rain Man. Even though, as I said, this was over 20 years ago, over 30 years ago now, actually, many people still see that as their main portrayal of autism, even though, I said, our understanding of autism has come along a long way in the past 30 years, as well as our understanding of many other areas in life. So I think people's attachment to Rain Man being the synonymous autistic person is something we need to move away from. It was a good representation back in the 1980s when we thought only 1 in 10,000 people were autistic. We know that figure's a lot higher nowadays, but obviously things have evolved since then. Okay, and how would you say that schools and workplaces can become more inclusive for individuals with autism? So one of the ways I think we can all become more accepting of autism is to understand what it's really like to be autistic. As I've said in my talks, anywhere between 2 to 4% of the population is autistic. So any school you go to, any workplace, chances are there will be at least one autistic person, whether they choose to make that known or not. So in order to have an understanding environment is at school, like encouraging people to learn in different ways. And so for me as an autistic child, 
being able to be top in the class in subjects like maths and the sciences while receiving support in other areas such as English and when it came to my social skills and in the workplace as well. If you tell an employer that you are neurodivergent or disabled, it is law in the UK that they have to make reasonable adjustments for you, so small changes that can make a big difference. So whether that is just understanding and compassion or workplace adjustments such as flexible working or installing specific software, there are tools that are out there being used today that we can use to help understand autism and make autistic people feel understood and accepted. Great answer. Thank you. <laughs> uh, finally, as a regular guest speaker, what message would you like to convey through your talks about being on the spectrum? One of the main messages I like to convey about autism through my talks is that there is a positive side to being autistic as well. Yes, autism is defined by our lack of social skills and we do need support when it comes to our social skills and understanding other people. But once we are supported, once we are in an environment that we feel comfortable, we're then able to use our strengths and our skills, not just to become good friends and good people, but also some of us can make a real difference to society. Well, thank you very much. This thank is really so interesting. Much. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you for having me.